and another poila boishak is coming to make this day little special i am going to share with you an another special bengali non-veg thali in this thali you can get a plate full of bengali delicacies hello viewers myself shuparna welcome to simply food before starting to this video please subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to get the notification of our new video in today's thali i am going to serve basanti pulao or sweet yolo rice luchi or a deep fried flat bread Cholar dal or a Bengali chana dal preparation, alur dam or spicy dried potato curry, narkel postor bora or coconut poppy seeds fritters, Bangladeshi murgi bhuna or Bangladeshi chicken bhuna, chingrir malai curry or prawns malai curry, papar, green papaya chutney, mishti doi or sweet curd and pan or a mouth freshener. First, I am going to make Chingrin Malai Curry. It is a Bengali curry made with prawns, coconut milk and flavored with spices. The gravy is surprisingly silky, smooth and creamy. I'll mind the prawns, add half teaspoon of salt and half teaspoon of turmeric powder into the bowl. Now coat the prawns well and rest for 10 to 15 minutes. Now into a pan, take 3 tablespoon of mustard oil. Once the oil is hot, place the marinated prawns one by one. Prawn doesn't take too much time to cook. Fry them for 3 to 4 minutes. I first wash the prawns well, then I cut the legs and antennas. Then by using a skewer, I remove the back line of the prawns, which the prawns intestine. Flip them. Fry each side for 2 minutes maximum. They are nicely fried. Take out from the pan and set aside. Now I'll make the curry. Into the remaining oil add bay leaf, half teaspoon of panch furon and one dry red chili. I'll give the link of the panch furon, saute them little. In Bengali cuisine we use panch furon, radhuni, nigella seeds that are kalo jire to temper the oil. Now add sliced onion, fry the onion until they are nicely soft and little brown. Onions are nicely fried, add one teaspoon of garlic paste. Saute them well. I'll fry the garlic and onions till the raw smell are gone from the garlic paste. Add chopped tomato. I have take one tomato. Fry the tomatoes. This dish is very popular throughout Bengal and is served during special occasions and ceremonies. As you can see, the tomatoes are soft enough. I'll add the spices. Add half teaspoon of turmeric powder, one teaspoon of red chili powder. half teaspoon of coriander powder, one teaspoon of cumin powder, one teaspoon of sugar and salt to taste. Two green chilies, add one teaspoon of ginger paste. Cook the spices until all the raw smell of the spices are gone. While you add the spices, keep the flame very low, otherwise the onions can burn. If you notice that the pan is so hot, add very little water and cook the spices. Now, I'll add very little water. My spices are nicely cooked. Give a good mix. Once it starts to boil, I'm adding previously fried prawns. Overcooked prawns taste rubbery in texture, so don't cook them longer. Basically, the flavor of malai curry comes from the coconut milk. Just flip the prawns to the other side. Cover the pan and cook for 7 to 8 minutes. After 8 minutes, open the lid. Give a good stir but lightly as the prawn side can be parted away from its tail. Now add light coconut milk, 1 cup. Give a good mix. Cook this for 5 minutes. Now time to add heavy coconut milk, 3 4 cup. Mix little. Cook them for 5 minutes more on a high heat. After 5 minutes, sprinkle half teaspoon of garam masala powder and 1 teaspoon of clarified butter. Give a mix and switch off the flame and rest for 10 minutes before serving. 
once it's cooled down little the curry will be little thick that's why i am keep this consistency of the curry chingreen malai curry is ready to serve it really tastes best with mashonti pulao Now I am starting to make the meat preparation of this thali, Bangladeshi chicken puna. Chicken puna is incredibly simple to make. This recipe is originating from Bangladesh. In a deep pan, take 4 tablespoons of mustard oil. I'll temper the oil with two bay leaves. I just stir them off. Add cinnamon sticks, few cardamoms and cloves. Fry them little. Do not add them into very hot oil. They may burn. Now I am adding sliced onion. I have taken three medium-sized onion. Try to slice them thinly. Fry these onions until the color changes to the light brown. It would take seven to ten minutes to fry them on medium heat. You can see the onions are lightly brown. Add one tablespoon of garlic paste. and 1 tablespoon of ginger paste fry them well for 2 minutes onions and ginger garlic are well fried at half cup of beaten yogurt also stir it well puna is cooking process where all spices are gently fried in plenty of oil to bring their flavor then the meat added to the masala and cook the meat in its own juices now i'll add our ground spices at 1 teaspoon of turmeric powder 1 and 1/2 teaspoon of kashmiri red chili powder 1 teaspoon of red chili powder 1 and 1/2 teaspoon of cumin powder 1/2 teaspoon of coriander powder add salt to taste Mix all the spices well. If you like spicy food, then definitely you may add more red chili powder. You can see the color. Onions are well cooked and masalas are nicely infused. Add chopped tomato. Give a good mix. Add just two tablespoons of water to this. Mix well. Cover the pan and cook for five minutes on simmer to cook the tomato. After five minutes, open the lid. Oils are oozing out. Just look at the color. Stir well. Scrape the bottom of the pan. It is the main thing for getting a rich dark color for this dish. Now add large pieces of chicken. I bought one and half kg of chicken and cut them into big pieces. You can see the actual weight on the screen. Start to coat them with the spices. You need to be very patienceful at this time, as these are quite big pieces. I just turn them one by one and quickly. Every piece should be coated well. Do not forget to scrape the bottom of the pan. I'll cook them for 15 minutes, just like this. Just stir them on every three to four minutes. 15 minutes later, chicken pieces are nicely coated with the spices. Add 100 ml of water. Give a good mix, but do not add much water. Chicken will release the water and they will cook by its own juice. Cover the pan and cook for 45 minutes. But at this time, on every 10 minutes, open the lid and stir the chicken. Then put on the lid. You have to maintain the timing to stir them. After 45 minutes, you can see the color and the gravy. I do not add any water. Try to turn the pieces to the other side. Chicken is nicely cooked and tender also. You can poke the fork or a skewer to check them. Now add green chilies, four pieces. Give a little stir. Bangladeshi murgi bhuna is ready. It really goes well with any kind of pulao recipe and also goes well with normal fluffy basmati rice. Now I'm going to make aloo dum or spicy dried potato curry. Bengali's kosha aloo dum has blend of spices and creaminess of the yogurt. Into a deep pan, take 2 tablespoons of mustard oil, 
was the oily sort add pre-boiled potatoes i add salt while boiling the potatoes so that they are seasoned from inside as well fry the potatoes for 5 minutes fry them from each side the potatoes are nicely fried they are light golden brown take them out from the oil and set aside into the same oil add one bay leaf one dry red chili and half teaspoon of cumin seeds saute them little now add two medium sized sliced onions fry them until they are translucent once the onions are fried add 2 teaspoon of garlic paste 1 teaspoon of ginger paste fry the garlic and ginger paste with the onions for 30 seconds now add chopped tomato fry them for 5 minutes when the tomatoes are little soft add half teaspoon of turmeric powder 1 teaspoon of red chili powder 1 teaspoon of kashmiri red chili powder 1 teaspoon of cumin powder 1/2 teaspoon of coriander powder 1 teaspoon sugar and salt to taste now mix all the spices well if you want you can add more sugar add little water to prevent the burning of the spices cook the masala well now add 1 teaspoon of melon seeds paste mix it with the spices now add 1/4 cup of yogurt i beat the yogurt well mix the yogurt a little quickly to avoid curdling so now add previously fried potatoes give a very good mix i love the red color of any curry but i doesn't like too much spiciness so i add very much kashmiri red chili powder in my recipes after mixing well add blanched green peas again mix them together add warm water warm water will help the potatoes cook faster give a mix and cook for 10 minutes after 10 minutes sprinkle half teaspoon of garam masala powder and 1 teaspoon of clarified butter mix them well and rest for 10 to 15 minutes kosha alur dam is ready serve along with bengali style luchi I'll give the link of chola dal in the description box please check out the recipe from the description box I'm going to make very favorite and delicacy of Bengal narkel postor bora this is a coconut poppy seed fritters in a bowl take 2 tablespoon of poppy seed paste add half cup of grated coconut i only grind poppy seeds with water i do not add green chilies then salt to taste Half teaspoon of turmeric powder, chopped green chilies, lots of. One tablespoon of wheat flour, and two tablespoon of rice flour. Now mix them well. No need to add water; they combine easily. If you do not have rice flour, you can skip it. Rice flour adds little crunch to the fritters. Now take little portion of the mixture and form a ball shape and flatten its surface. Also shape the sides. Keep them aside. Now, in hot oil, place them one by one. Keep the flame medium. Fry them for three minutes. After three minutes. flip them to the other side this narkel postor bora are mainly accompanied with just plain hot rice and this is a superb combination for me the boras are nicely brown and they are ready serve them piping hot also you can enjoy them as snack
Now I'm going to make one of the main dish of this thali, Bashanti Pulao or sweet yellow rice. It is a very traditional Bengali recipe made on special vegetables. It is a soaked and dried rice. Add half teaspoon of turmeric powder, salt to taste, half teaspoon of ginger paste and one tablespoon of clarified butter. If you want, you can add more ghee. Now coat the rice with the spices evenly. I am using basmati rice but traditionally we use Gobindu Pok rice. I take 2 cups of rice, rest this rice for 30 minutes. Now in a karai, take 1 tablespoon of clarified butter. Let the ghee melt little. You have to be generous about ghee for this particular recipe. Now take 3 pieces of bay leaves, cinnamon sticks, 5 to 6 pieces of cardamoms, 7 to 8 pieces of cloves. Fry the whole spices little into the ghee. Now add cashew nuts. Fry them for 2 minutes on low heat. Cashews are nicely brown. Add previously marinated rice. Start the rice well, but one thing as the rice is soaked into water and also marinated, so the grains are little delicate. They can break easily, so start the rice gently. Fry them for 5 minutes. They are nicely fried. Add few raisins. Fry them for 2 minutes more. Now add 3 cups of water. You may add more 1 4th cup of water but not more. If you add water too much then it will be smashy pulao. So the quantity of water is really important thing for this rice recipe. Cover the pan and cook for 15 minutes on low heat. After 15 minutes open the lid and you can see every rice grain is nice and fluffy and the aroma is mind blowing. Give a little stir. Now add 1 tablespoon of sugar. You can add more sugar as per your taste. It depends how much sweet flavor you like. Mix this sugar very lightly. Add 3 to 4 green chilies. Give a very little stir and cover the pan and cook for more 5 minutes. This fragrant yellow sweet pulao gives a sweet touch to your meal that speaks of a grand celebration. After 5 minutes, open the lid and rest for 5 to 10 minutes. Bashanti pulao is ready to serve. This beautiful aromatic sweet pulao goes well with kosha mangsho, the perfect delightful combination. Now I am going to make the condiment of this thali, green papaya chutney or pepe chutney. It is also known as plastic chutney. This is a very unique recipe of Bengal. It is specially serves on ceremonies. In a pan, take half cup of sugar. Into this, take one cup of water. Let it comes to boil. I am using half portion of a medium sized raw papaya so that I am using half cup of sugar. If you make a whole papaya, then take 1 cup of sugar and adjust the quantity of water also. The sugar syrup is not thick. Into this sugar syrup, add very thinly sliced papaya. Give a nice stir. Boil this raw papaya until the sugar syrup thickens and also the papayas are soft but not too much. Cover the pan and cook for just 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, open the lid. You can see sugar syrup is thickened and all the papayas are nicely translucent. You may cut the raw papaya into big chunks lengthwise after peeling the skin. Then you may use a slicer to slice them. Add salt to taste. Mix the salt. Now cook this for 1 to 2 minutes. Add chopped cashew nuts and raisins. Mix them and cook for just 2 minutes. The chutney will thicken as it cools down once. 2 minutes later, add 2 teaspoon of lemon juice. It will add nice tangy flavor to this chutney and also bring some nice aroma with freshness. Green papaya chutney is ready. Whoever doesn't like green papaya, just make this recipe and you will love it.
Now I am going to make the dessert of this thali mishti doi or sweet yogurt. It is a fermented sweet yogurt. Mishti doi is a big delicacy as well as nostalgia of Bengal. Into a pan, take 500 ml of milk. This is full fat milk. In Bengali, mishti means sweet and doi means yogurt. Stir the milk frequently. Always stir the milk to prevent the burning. Do not put the flame very high. Keep it medium. The milk is boiling for 5 minutes on simmer. Scrape the bottom of the pan and also scrape the wall of the pan. Now I am adding few saffron sticks. Usually pinch of cardamom powder added for flavoring but I am adding saffron sticks to add the flavor. It really turns out so so good and saffron also enhance the color of doi. Now I am adding 2 tablespoons of milk powder. Stir well. Make sure the milk powder dissolves well into the milk. Bring it to boil and switch up the flame and set the milk aside to cool down. Now in heavy bottom pan, take half cup of sugar. I am caramelizing the sugar. Give a stir. It started to caramelize. Now add water very little like one and half tablespoon. Give a mix. Keep stirring it frequently. As you can see the sugar changes its color. It is nicely caramelized and brown as well. Pour the caramelized sugar into the previously thickened milk but when the milk is hot. So adjust the timing to make the caramel. Pour this quickly. Now stir this with a whisker to melt it into the milk but be careful at this stage as these are very hot you may burn your fingertips mix well and make sure there should not be any lump now add curd into the lukewarm milk i add two and half teaspoon of sweet curd mix the curd well it will help to ferment you have to whisk it well after mixing well Pour the mixture into clay pot. For making mishti doi, it's better to use earthen bowls or pan. The porous walls of the earthen bowls absorb the moisture from the doi and the doi turns out nicely thick. I soak this clay pot into water for half an hour. Now cover them with the aluminium foil or a cotton cloth and rest for overnight. Rest them on dry and little warm place but do not place them into refrigerator at this time. Mishti doi is ready. It's sweet, creamy and has light texture from the malai. Please check out the full recipe of luchi from the description box. I'll give the link in the description box. Pan is made from bitter leaves and it is eaten with various fillings put on top and folded into triangle or rolled. After chewing it, either spat out or swallowed. Pan is sweeter, mouth freshener, digestive and symbol of hospitality. It is widely consumed throughout Southeast Asia, East Asia and Indian subcontinent. So here we are, we complete our Poyla Bushak special Bengali non thali and serve them. That's it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Hit the like button after watching this video. Leave your comment in the comment section. Do subscribe to our channel and share our videos. Thank you. Bye.